Hello and welcome to my teardown of the Libra 8 DDS3 tape changer. It's a SCSI tape changer um, with a capacity for eight tapes. And it uh, looks kind of like a MIDI tower and uh, kind of like looks like a PC, but it isn't. It's a SCSI device. Uh, on the back, you can clearly see the SCSI input and output. And there is a power supply, which kind of looks like a modified PC power supply. And here you can um, set the SCSI ID, the LUN as it's called in SCSI. And up here you'll see a SCSI Terminator installed, which uh, ensures that the bus impedance is correct in the end. Uh, without this Terminator, um, the whole thing starts up and gives an error message. So I'm just going to start it up and load up the deck before we start the disassembly. So now it gives us the option to load a tape and we're going to do that right now. All right, so as you can see in here, the tape has been loaded. I really can't change the tape right now because the menu doesn't offer any option like that. So I'm going to unload it and then we are going to disassemble the whole unit. So just to show you what it can do, if no tape is loaded, you can hit the load key and it will try to load a tape deck, but there's none. And you can go into this menu where you can either set up or select diagnostics. I'm going to select diagnostics here. You can reset it or you can hit manual key, which only appears to display the current state. So it will say the Libra is idle and we can exit that menu and in the setup menu there is a security config or security and config options the config option can select the mode and um, it can be either sequential or random currently it's in sequential mode because in sequential mode it immediately loads the first tape that it gets otherwise it waits for an instruction from the host so I won't change that to random right now. Oh, I need to go back again. So in the security mode, you can enter a pin to disable the whole ejection of tapes. So if I select enable here, I can enter four digit password, select one, two, three, one. Ah, okay, I've already entered a password before, so I'm going to have to change that first. I'm going to select and I'm going to say change. My old password was 11111. My new password is 1234. Enable security system. No. There is really not much more you can do. Um, especially or one thing that I would have expected was that you could manually change tapes but you really can't with this interface here you can only uh, unload the whole tape assembly so now we see the device from top 
The interesting thing is that there seems to be a normal tape deck installed here. It's a Sony SDT 9000 D-Log. And in front here we have the actual tape changer, some mechanical uh, items and down here some light barriers. So this is the side view. You will notice that over here there's a regular PC power supply. Uh, at least it looks like one. Then there is some special electronics over here and here. We'll take a look at that later. And again, here's the tape changer and here's the tape assembly. I'm now going to take out the whole assembly unit so we can have a close look at the components. So this here really is the heart and soul of the whole unit. You can see the drive itself, uh, the STD9000 here, and the loader unit here. These are two motors over here, the silver ones. I'm guessing one is for the up and down motion and the other one is for pushing tapes in or pulling them out. I don't know how that works. The motor seems to um, have... Ha or the motor axis seems to uh, go here and um, the whole assembly is driven up and down just with the contact of these uh, rubber stoppers here. So then over here um, there's not much else to see. There's a microcontroller or I'm guessing it's a microcontroller running it uh, with a 4 uh, megahertz crystal. Here are two L6202 devices. I'm not exactly sure what those are, but they might well be motor drivers for behind there. I'm going to peel off the cover of this 7U93025 chip um, just to see uh, what kind of microcontroller that is. I'm guessing it's a 8051. And back here is a time code, it says 1991, so that seems about accurate. So it looks like I've been wrong about the microcontroller, it's not an 8051, it's a Motorola 86K. But I was right about the motor drivers, the L6202, I've looked that up, it's a DMOS full bridge driver, so those are uh, with a very, very high likelihood uh, controlling the motors back here. So these are the two front panel PCBs. Actually is two PCBs which are connected uh, like that together. It consists of a display. Here we have a five volt label. So I'm guessing it's for the backlight. And these here are the data lines. It's not really labeled, but from the chip look of it, I'm guessing this might be a HD 44780 compatible display. I'm just going to have to try that out. And here on this PCB there seems to be a microcontroller for megahertz again. And this is what appears to me as uh, probably an I square C E E prom. It's labeled 93C006 C B1. I'm guessing this is an I square C E prom, and I'm going to peel off the label from this chip here, which says 1U93028 revision D. And let's see what that is. So the label says it's a MC68MC705C8A. So I'm guessing this is probably one of the 8-bit series microcontrollers from Motorola 6800, maybe 68,000. I'm not really sure here. Can't can't really find enough information about that. So this is the board that was installed in back, and it's kind of interesting because um, we've seen uh, two Motorola controllers so far, but this is a Zilog Z80. Um, I'm guessing here we'll find another Motorola controller. This appears to be some kind of SCSI interface because 
This is apparently the part of the device that is responsible for relaying the actual switch commands for, for the library unit for the tape changer. It has a 24 megahertz clock here. I don't know what that chip is. And this looks like an operational amplifier, TL something. something. So it's a Texas Instruments device. Interesting is that below this dip 28 or something, appears to be, I don't know if you can see that, but below there, just going to take off the chip. Below there, there's yet another chip. There was a 27C256, so this is probably program memory for that Zilog Z80 that is here. And I'm guessing this is the SRAM for that. It says TC5, TC5588J-20. So the dash 20 is kind of an indicator for me. It's usually, um, usually the delay time of SRAM. Over here, there are some Texas Instruments operational amplifier or something like that, TL something something. It's a TL7702A, so I'm guessing that's a, either a comparator or a operational amplifier. And interesting, I've peeled off the last label, and this is a Maxim Max 231. So it appears that the communication uh, that goes internally is um, probably some RS232 variant, and they just uh, use this device as a transceiver. And if that RS232 transceiver theory is correct, then I'm guessing this is probably also a Maxim chip. We'll know if we peel the label off here. Yep, bingo, it's also a MAX-231. So it appears this is the transceiver which communicates with the backboard. So this is the actual tape drive. It has here some mechanism, which I'm guessing is the front panel connector to get this drive to eject its current cassette. Some jumpers here, parity enable, terminator enable, stuff like that. So apart from that, it's just a standard drive with the front panel connector going here. Okay, so this is the drive assembly. You can see the two motors here and two micro switches here and in there. Then there is two forked light barriers. One is here and the other one back there. And then there are a couple of, I think they are TO18, probably phototransistors, one, two, three. And on the other side, he has four and five, so five photodiodes or phototransistors, I'm guessing, just to detect if there is an object present. The next thing I'm going to do is just um, put power to these motors. I'm guessing they are 12 or five volts, probably 12 volts, and see what actually they move in there. Okay, since I don't know the voltage, I'm first going to apply five volts to the upper motor here. Uh, 
An interesting thing here, the screw, you can probably see it. It has moved over and it now um, trips the switch here. So now we know it's at its end position and we can just reverse the polarity and pull it back. So since the upper motor is obviously for pushing this lever in and out, I'm guessing the other motor is for moving the whole assembly up and down. So I'm going to actuate that now. So then as the last step, I would like to disassemble the power supply to see if it really is actually a modded PC power supply. It doesn't output, for example, 3.3 volts, which I would expect from a PC power supply, but maybe internally it's available and it's uh, just the cables that have uh, been cut off. So let's just take that apart and see for ourselves. Okay, so I open it up and indeed there is no 3.3 volts line in here, but my memory must have fooled me because I I was thinking a PC power supply, even an AT one, uh, should, have ha should have had a 3.3 volt line, but I just checked that and indeed the AT power supplies don't have a 3.3 volts. They only have... Um, 5 and 12 volt output and a negative 12 um, volts line. So indeed it looks like this is just a standard issue uh, AT PC power supply. So that's all for this teardown. We've taken a look at all the components from the actual drive to the tape changer from the front panel to the changer logic to the back end and actually also even looked into the power supply. I hope you had some fun watching this video and uh, hope you tune in again. Have a nice day. Bye.